Hit play from your phone. You have an external volume control on the cooler itself. You also have an auxiliary input on the front. You have a main power switch. And on the back, I actually put a charge port on the back. The reason I did that is everything is self-contained. There's a battery and amplifier and everything inside this cooler. So let's check all of that out now. Now we designed this cooler for it to be all stock on the inside so you don't see no wires, no batteries, no switches, nothing like that. Everything is self-contained in the lid itself and that's the way we want to design this cooler. Um, there it goes. So, Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Ryan Fenners. Welcome back to the Fennertainment channel. On today's video, we're going to be adding a Bluetooth stereo to our Ozark Trail cooler. Stay tuned. So I picked this cooler up from Walmart a few weeks back. This is a 26 quart Ozark Trail cooler. It's a knockoff Yeti, knockoff Arctic, whatever you want to call it. The ice retention of this cooler worked great. I was not at all disappointed one bit with it for it being only 79 bucks. It actually made the deal a little bit sweeter. However, when I purchased this cooler, I purchased it for one reason, and it was to add a Bluetooth stereo to it like I used to do back in the day. All right guys, so I started by bringing the cooler and old table, all the parts and tools to make this indoors today. I actually jacked one of my bedrooms just for this tutorial. The reason why is the humidity here in South Carolina is extremely hot and very miserable. So we gathered all the parts for this cooler and I'll put a link in the description where I bought every single thing for this cooler in this tutorial. So the speakers play a main role in the cooler and not just for quality sound. The speaker opening has to be big enough that we can slide an amplifier and a battery into the lid of the cooler easily and having enough room for the speakers themselves. So in order to get started I use this waterproof speaker gasket here. I used it to mark a circle on top of the cooler on both sides and I cut it out with my roto zip. I wouldn't suggest using a jigsaw here because the jigsaw blade would be too tall for the top of this cooler here and might extrude through the bottom side of the lid. So once you have the holes drilled on top of the cooler, now it's time to remove the foam. This is what keeps the cooler insulated over time and yes, if you cut holes into your cooler to install speakers like I did, your cooler will no longer last the three or four days like it's supposed to last. So before you go start drilling any holes into the side of your cooler for your power button, your charge port, or any other hole into the cooler, take these leftover circle rings that were cut out from the top of the cooler and test fit each and every switch or hole before you actually drill into the cooler itself. This is just a little practice and a little helpful tip for the long run so you don't accidentally mess up the cooler itself. So the amplifier we are using in this cooler is very small and compact and we're actually going to install it between the two speaker locations. The amplifier has two external ports. One is this auxiliary input with a marine cover. The other one is a volume control knob. I took the roto zip and popped a hole in the top of the cooler to install this volume control knob. It fits really good and there's two screws that are included that will secure this to the lid itself. Next I took my stepper bit here and I drilled a hole for the auxiliary input on the front lower portion of the cooler. This is still on the lid but it's on the front of the lid itself. Then I used this applied plastic nut to tighten it to the lid of the cooler so it won't go anywhere. So this is the power switch I'm using. It's an illuminated on off switch and it is supplied with this harness here. Now in this harness we will not be using the yellow wire so I went ahead and removed those. The four wires that are remaining here, one red and one black, that is power and ground for the light inside the switch. And the blue wire on both sides is the power or the conjunction leg going in and out of the switch itself. So in order for the light on the switch to power on with the amplifiers on and power off when the amplifier is off, connect the red wire to the output of the blue leg, connect the other blue wire by itself here to the input of the 12 volt and connect this black wire here to your ground. 
So we took the stepper bit and drilled a hole in the front of the lid on the opposite side of the auxiliary port. Now since the power switch has a real tiny nut that goes on behind it and it'll be really hard to get onto it, I actually drilled the hole a little bit smaller than the power switch itself so we had to actually push it into place to make it stick. So I picked up this 12 volt 6000 milliamp an hour battery. It comes with a charger and a Y cable that will help connect to other devices. It also has an on and off switch that we leave in the on position at all times. This is just a simple lithium ion battery. So in order to charge the battery, I bought some of these panel mount adapters with the weatherproof boot. I also purchased some of these external adapters that will match the two together. I drilled a hole into the back of the cooler just small enough where this panel mount adapter would fit in there very snugly. So this right here is pretty much the wiring schematic. The battery goes into the Y adapter that is included with the battery itself. One port of that goes to the charge receptacle. The other portion of that goes to the amplifier and to the switch. Now the amplifier has a red and a black main power and ground. It also has a blue. The blue is a remote turn on. So you actually send power through the switch through the remote turn on to power the amplifier on. So before I went ahead and slid all the components into the cooler, I hooked it up to make sure it was working. Now once you're ready to go ahead and slide everything back together, go ahead and easily place the battery in the amplifier and all the wires into the cooler without pulling any of the connections apart. Now on all of my connections, I used a soldering iron and solder and then just isolated everything with black electrical tape. Shown here is I'm actually installing the speakers and I'm putting the screws into the cooler of the speakers. Now where the screws are going into the cooler there's nothing below them so the amplifier and the battery is out of the way from these screws that's pretty much it guys after you get this right here done just put it on charge let it charge up on this charger that i have here if you purchase the same one that i have the charger will illuminate red when it's charging it'll illuminate green once it's fully charged So if you're wondering about range, the Bluetooth range I got was about 35 feet and it was still going. There was no need to go any further. Alright guys, I want to say thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, be sure to check out the links in the description for the parts used on this cooler. Also share this right here with a friend. If you've enjoyed this video, smash a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to the Fentertainment channel and check out these other great videos. And until next time, we'll see you later.